day 15, Genesis 42-44, reconciliation of brothers 22 years later. Joseph met with his brothers who came down to Egypt to purchase grain. He tested them for the purpose of solving the conflict that had torn them apart all those long years ago. First point, two years since the seven years of abundance, Egypt's neighboring nations were suffering from food shortage. During Joseph's time in Egypt, by God's grace, Egypt and its surrounding countries were able to experience abundance for seven years. However, this abundance was immediately followed by a terrible famine which went on for seven years. This led to a state of emergency for all surrounding countries. It was at this time that people heard Egypt had stored crops. Naturally, everyone from all different countries gathered to Egypt. People at the time had no idea famine would go on for another five years. But Pharaoh, through Joseph, was foretold about what was to happen. For this reason, Joseph must have appeared like a god. So we can imagine that Joseph's worth was at its peak during the second year of the famine, nine years into Joseph's position of political power. Second point. After 22 years, Joseph accuses his brothers as spies. Joseph's ten brothers came to Egypt to buy crops. As Joseph had expected, Benjamin was nowhere to be found. It is possible that Joseph thought his brothers may have treated Benjamin the way they treated him. The brothers told Joseph that they were born from the same father, twelve brothers in total. At this, Joseph commanded the brothers to bring Benjamin to prove that they were not spies. The ten brothers would have felt extremely anxious at this. They began to say that they were being punished for selling Joseph as a slave 22 years ago. Through this conversation, Joseph learned that his father and Benjamin were still alive. Third point, during famine, Jacob for the first time impressed and moved his family. Once again, Jacob's intense favoritism became a huge problem. Jacob refused to let Benjamin go. Eventually, it was Judah that proposed an offer his father was unable to refuse. Jacob eventually made up his mind. Jacob's, if I am believed, I am believed. It's comparable to writer as does, if I perish, I perish. Indeed, they were both bold statements. Fourth point, Joseph put all his schemes together to test his brothers. Joseph tested his brothers two times. The first was when he invited 11 of his brothers to a party where he gave Benjamin five times more food than anyone else. The ten brothers passed the first test. The second was the infamous silver cup in Benjamin's back test. At this, Joseph offered a sweet deal. Joseph said that only Benjamin would have to remain and the other ten could return to their father. It was here that Judah intervened. He pleaded that he would stay in Benjamin's place as a slave. As Abraham completely moved God on Mount Moriah with his willingness to sacrifice Isaac as offering, Judah's speech completely moved Joseph. Fifth point, Judah's speech had three points. First, Judah addressed the topic of jealousy, which Joseph was so keen to hear about. Joseph wanted to know whether his brothers were jealous of Benjamin the way they had been of him. 
When Judah volunteered to take Benjamin's place, Joseph discovered that this issue had been solved. Second, it was clear that Judah wanted to save his father. He volunteered himself in Benjamin's place so that his father would not be saddened. Later, we can see why Jacob blessed his fourth son Judah so much in Genesis chapter 49. In the middle of famine, Judah gave up looking after his sons in order to save his entire family, and even gave up his life entirely by volunteering to be a slave in Egypt. When his father Jacob heard everything, he must have felt a rush of gratitude toward his fourth son. Third, we learn that Judah truly came to love his brother Benjamin. In truth, Benjamin did not steal the silver cup. This was unfair on his part too, but nevertheless, he was responsible. But when Judah stood up to take his place, Benjamin must have felt immense gratitude for his older brother. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tong Doc Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does, the way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. And let me tell you how important this app is in a, in a biblical sense. There's this incredible passage in, in Numbers 12, verses 6 to 8, where Miriam and Aaron are fighting. All right, These are the sister of Moses and the brother of Moses. And they are insisting that God speaks to them, maybe as much as through their brother Moses. And and they're, they're bickering and, and going bantering back and forth. And finally, God has enough of it. So he, he calls them into the tent of meeting. And this is what he says to them. Now, this is Numbers 12, 6 to 8. Listen to my words, Miriam and Aaron. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak. The Hebrew here is pay el pay. Pay is the 70th letter of the Hebrew alphabet and literally means mouth. In fact, the ancient character, the Hebrew character of pay was the, 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 the outline of a mouth. So God is not appearing to Moses face to face. God is appearing and speaking to Moses. You ready? Mouth to mouth mouth to mouth. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The Bible, do you get it? This is the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, were seen as mouth to mouth resuscitation, the, the continuing of God's breath that was breathed initially into the first Adam. The breath of God brought us to life and made us human. And then the tree of life kept that breathing going. And then we're separated from, from that tree with the fall. And now we have, though, the word of God. And it comes to us mouth to mouth from the divine. It's these, but we need daily mouth to mouth inhalations. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tong Doc Bible is so important. Well, the devil's tempting Jesus, Matthew 4.4, 4, remember this? Man shall not live by what? Right alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds how? From out of the mouth of God. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. 
And that's why this app is so important. The, the, the scripture was not given to us as a reading. It was given to us as a hearing. You didn't read the Bible. You heard it. Hebrew children didn't read and memorize the Torah. They heard it. And, and, and from the hearing of it, they memorized it, not from the reading of it. And so it is so important that we understand that faith comes by what? Hearing. And as this passage says in Numbers, that from the mouth to mouth, then Moses saw the form of God. So sound becomes sight. It, it is, the ears come first. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life. 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.